Welcome everyone. Beautiful Norwood Oval here on a Saturday twilight game, seven o'clock start. This is game three of the four game series between the Adelaide Bite and the Sydney Blue Sox. We uh, have a game score of one all at the moment and they've been very, very tight games. Brad Thomas going off for the Sydney Blue Sox. So it's an awesome task for the Bite to respond and score some runs and give Paul Mildren as best chance as possible. I'll quickly run through the lineups for you. For the Blue Sox, JD Williams at left field, Zach Penfrose at shortstop, Mick Stenning centre field, James Robbins at first base, Jeff Klein catching, Chris Snelling at right field, Boss Monaroa at DHing, Zach Shepard third base, Jacob Eunice at second base, and as I said, Brad Thomas will take the mound for the Sox. For the bite, pretty much the same same as last night. Nate Melendrez leading off at shortstop, Ben Lodge left field, Steph Welsh at third base, G-Man Choi first base, Quincy Lattimore centre field, Adam Cam DHing, Angus Rozier at right field, Chris Adamson behind the dish, Josh Capebred at second base, and Paul Mildren, the lefty, will be going off for the bite. So it's been a very tight series thus far and nothing much has changed with regards to the bite. It's a win at all costs. So it's a very, very crucial couple of games and there have been a couple of crackers and if it follows on, we're in for another treat tonight. My name's Andrew Sperling. I'll be joined by Craig Watts and with my partner Peter Wyatt, we are the 10th inning. I just had a bit of a look at the series averages at the moment and... Uh, Apart from a couple of hitters in both sides, um, it's all pretty much average. Dave Candless, who isn't in the lineup tonight, will endeavour to find out a reason why. He's uh, leading the way for the Sox, hitting 500. And they've got a couple of guys. Uh, Shepard came in, played the one game, hitting 3-3-3. And a couple of 280 hitters in Eunice and Denning. And with regards to the bite, Melendrez is hitting 440. Uh, Welsh 3-3-3, Adam Cam again from limited at-bats hitting 500, Chris Adamson doing a great job behind the dish and hitting 360. So all in all, fairly tight sort of uh, team averages that balance out about the same. So probably the difference being at the minute that the Blue Sox just very strong out of the pen and the bite have to make their changes very shrewdly and wisely to maximise their pitching depth. So we'll have a short break. We normally have the national anthem, and which I'm sure won't be far away. And we're about two or three minutes away from the first pitch. So we'll see you real soon. Check one, two. The Adelaide Bite uh, heading out onto the ground right now.
So welcome back, everyone. As I mentioned before, game three of this four-game series, we're currently tied away at a game apiece. Last night's game, or the first two nights games, we played in oppressive heat here in temperatures above 40. Unfortunately, today it's been a, a massive change. We're down into the 30s and everything is great as Paul Mildren delivers a ball first up to lead off hitter JD Williams. And he gets one over the plate for strike one. Welcome by my big buddy here, Watsy, who's on board with us tonight as JD Williams flies one out to centre field. Lattimore eight or ten paces back and takes a long fly ball from JD Williams. How are you, Spillo? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Oh, look, I'm okay. Just had to get my family sorted. Brought my young fellow out to his first game today, so uh, just had to get everyone sorted downstairs. And now we're all sorted. We've got a ball game. You betcha, baby. And the life of a family man, hey? Sharing his time between all sorts of things. Oh, yes. That's what we've got to do these days. <laughs> Having my first year off. Enjoying it. Paulie Mildren looking very sharp to start off the, uh, the night. He'd be looking for a good outing tonight, there's no doubt. Yeah, Paul's for the first time in probably his whole career. His pen pros likes, like the look of that and he had a decent swing but he's, he's uh, become an academic and he's doing a lot of studying and it's just, you know, making his focus change a little bit and he realises that perhaps he's normally a workhorse and he just hasn't put in the amount of work that he's used to and just been finding and especially Absolutely. with that pitch yeah, where he's pitch. been looking a little bit unco and just not being able to get yeah. that change up across and he needs that pitch what yeah, absolutely no you're exactly right and uh, you know i was only talking to paul uh, about two weeks ago about that exact same thing about how paul you know for the last eight nine years of his career uh, up until last year he's been you know really baseball orientated and um, you know, being baseball orientated, that's all he does. This is all he did, and, and now he's you know been released by his uh, professional team, and and in the off season he's staying here in Australia. So you know he's trying to find that happy medium, but he is a workhorse, and he'll do it. He's as fit as they come. You know, he, he challenged Darren Fidge any day of the week, but uh, as he starts off, starts off really strong tonight, really strong. Exactly, and uh, you know it's something that we haven't seen from him, and, we, and we're so used to seeing it, and. Uh, to see him come out and throwing a lot of balls and not having command of pitches we know he's got command of, um, you know, that upset him more than anyone. Oh, and yeah. uh, no doubt he's just done what he does and he's knuckled down, worked really hard, and um, here he is just coming out firing tonight. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, it, Paul's a finesse pitcher. And uh, sometimes he does try and overthrow his fastball and his curveball. He leaves his curveball high. You know, he does throw a lot of home run pitches. Uh, leaves the ball up a little bit. But that's just that one or two pitches every game where he just needs to get the ball down. As he gets the third out there in the, uh, in the first inning, gives the guys a, a good opportunity and a good uh, way to come into their first inning, inning. For sure. We'll have a short break. We'll see you back here very soon.
smooth, folks. For only thirty five dollars, you can purchase that late white adjustable towel. And your sure senior in the pool, we can drink, buy the t-shirt. Only thirty five dollars. Great deal at the merchandise boomerang. So welcome back. Paul Mildren goes one, two, three on the blue socks at the top of the first. And now with the very dominating Brad Thomas. Should yeah, Brad, another very big finesse pitcher. Um, always has been, been around for a long, long time. Just a nice finesse guy. Keeping the guys off balance. Doesn't throw the ball overly hard. And just tries to keep them off balance. So welcome to everyone around the world and especially the Sydney siders that are tuning in with us and no doubt very eager to see the result of this weekend with their team very much competing even though the cavalry just continue to defy and just putting some fantastic performances together and they wouldn't just the keep Perth rolling away. Wouldn't the Perth Heat just want these series to be over? I mean that series just before New Year, after Christmas, and then back into it again, you know, getting thumped again last night. They would just want want that to be over. As Melendres gets a knock up the middle, leads things off for the Adelaide bite. Just a good piece of hitting there, Thomas. A bit of a change up and didn't try to hit the leather off of it. Just sat and drove it up the middle. Good lead off Nate Melendres, and that's why he's leading... This series in averages with 440, four hits, a walk, 1K, one home run, 440 average. He's uh, on fire. Good to see Benny Lodge starting to get on, on top at the moment. City's his fourth home run last night to start the things off for the bite. It really looks good up there, nice and stable. He does a lot of work, you know, during off-season he does, hits the weights pretty hard and, uh, you know, it's starting to show now. He's starting to be a, you know, a good, decent power hitter, certainly in club ball levels and he's starting to show that here in, uh, in the ABL as well. So Thomas delivers Lodge, nice hack at that and gets a little foul tip into the mid of Klein for a 1-1 count. None out, bottom of the first. Runner on first for the bite, Speedy Melendres. Oh, and there's an excellent pick off by Thomas. Probably if he just probably believed that he could have got him out, then he probably would have got him out. But I think he was just going over there and... Ended up, he had Nate on the wrong foot, and it, with a really good throw, it would have been very interesting. Yeah, that was just a little keep me honest move, wasn't it? It, uh, it wasn't looking to go over there and get him out. It was just keeping him honest, making sure that he wasn't going to get uh, a good enough jump on him and uh, got, him, got him offset. His lodge bunts effectively. So he does his job. He puts Melendres to second. And that's one of the things Ben's been doing very well. It's just just doing what the team's asking him to do. A little bit of pop in the two hole, but also able to get a bunt to ground. And especially early with Thomas on the mound, it'd be important for the bite to trouble the scorer early and get a bit of a lead and let Millie work his stuff. Yeah, I think uh, Tony's just trying to get uh, get an early run on the board to give a bit of um, a bit of a backbone to, to Millie and give him a bit of confidence. There's no doubt. Traditionally, Tony's not a an aggressive bunter early in the games, so I think that's what he's just trying to do there is just give give uh, Millie a little bit of um, a little bit of a lead and, and have something for him to go into the second inning with. Thomas 
as Welsh gets a slide that he swings through. Have such high expectations of Steph that sort of think he hasn't been going that great, but he's still hitting 3 3 3 with three hits and a few Ks, a home run. That pitch is down and it gets away from Klein and Melendrez skips his way around a third. And that's where the advantage of that bunt came up now. We're running on third base with, with, with one out and, uh, you know, Welshie up here who you wouldn't want anyone else up at the bat, your number three hole. But um, good piece of running there by Nath. Yeah, Steph's a sneaky one, you know, like uh, he came out last night and got two hits his first at, first two at-bats. Um, just to get something started, I think he got a run scored in, in the third or fourth. But um, as you would expect, infield playing back, so a ground ball will score a run, and he looks to do exactly that, but just chops it onto the plate. So baseball is certainly a game of opportunities. There's some very tight ball games, you get very few, and it's the team that can take advantage of their chances. And Adelaide have been given an early opportunity here to get a run on the board. It's just going to need a bit of good team hitting from Welsh. Either a fly ball, ground ball, just bat on ball. He gets a slider outside, he lays off. Good piece of hitting. 2-2 two, two count. Thomas tried to entice him into a swing there, but well showing all of the seven or eight years of being a young pro. He sets himself up again to do the job for the bite, and Thomas obviously looking to do the opposite for his team. He gets another pitch outside in the dirt. Klein nods to him and says good stuff Brad that's what I was after but Welsh again just hung tough never looked like swinging so full count one out runner on third for the bite early days bottom of the first Thomas again and he rips one gets it through the 4-3 hole for a base hit to right field. He scores Melendres. And again, not trying to over hit the ball, just did the job. Yeah, great piece of hitting by Steph Welsh. He knows exactly what he needs to do. Every pre-game he works on different situations, on his situational hitting and his mental approach and the way that he swung that bat there just shows the practice that he puts in and great piece of hitting to score the first RBI for the Adelaide Bite. This is exactly the start they're after. Get their engine room in early with a pitcher that already may have thrown 15 or 16 pitches. And he comes again and gets a fastball over the outside edge for strike one. And the G-man who he just hard not to get excited about just having a little bit of a quiet series at the moment. Still looking very dangerous. And there's another excellently located fastball. Strike two, so a cold 0-2 count on the clean up hitter Choi. No doubt Brad will be trying to keep the ball away from him and as Klein sets up outside and he gets Ooh. a slider. Just a superb pitch. Choi couldn't resist it. He strikes out. He will uh, learn from that in that next at bat. He hasn't seen him before, knowing that he's, he's working on that outside part of the plate. It's a good pitch by Nudo uh, you know there. So Quincy Lattimore, he's only been in town a couple of weeks. Hasn't really swung a bat since September. And Pete, our great producer here, bumped into him on the way in and uh, 
as per usual, just a great personality and a lovely kid and realising he's a little underdone at the moment. But uh, he's still a threat and he has ambition to step into AAA this year in the Pirates organisation. He's got some goals and ambitions. And no doubt he'll go back to spring training and be a lot further ahead than he would have been if he was sitting home taking some cuts in the in the cages. So again, Thomas ahead with an 0-2 count. And there's another slider that he's going to work through when he gets ahead. And it's a very dominating pitch from the big fella as he strolls off the diamond and the Adelaide Bite score a run. We'll be back real soon. Top of the second. Back here at the top of the second, Paul Mildren ready to go. Got himself a little one-run lead early. Should give him some confidence as we were talking about earlier, Spells. That was a good pitch by Mildren. Coming in hard at the hands of Robbins. Baseball's a funny old game that this guy looks so dangerous yet numbers don't always tell the story but one thing for sure he takes a mighty hack and he swings through a high fastball there for strike two right from the word go it's just another Paul Mildred pitching tonight from what we've seen last couple of times as he slides one outside, a little waste pitch. So 2-2 two, two count. Top second, none out. Bite snuck one on the board in the bottom of the first. It's Mildred from the wind up. And there's a great breaking pitch. He's, he strikes Robbins out. Quick shout out to our sponsors, Duck Dare Air Conditioning, that wonderful local manufacturer. And I, I'll give my spiel a little bit later on the importance of local manufacturing. MC Sportswear, Marshall Batteries, Colts Baseball Academy. And a couple of pledges from this client gets a Baltimore chopper. A one bounce at a third base well. She takes it cleanly and delivers nicely to Choi for second out. Yeah, good crowd tonight, Spello. Really so, good. Yeah, really good crowd. Nice and active and uh, a lot of people probably stayed away last night at the old 45 degree night. So it's good to see a, a number of people, especially the shark tent. The shark tent looks 
really, really busy over there, and uh, Dave O and his and his gang of merry men and women would be uh, rapt to see such a good crowd tonight. Absolutely, you're dead right. What's in the uh you know, when we're filling into the Wood Street stand that we're going okay and people are still coming and we thought you did it with the heat. But it has kept a few people away, but we've got a few Blue Sox fans here in the crowd. And we do. See about three or four just in front of us here on the it's right. Good to see. And Mildred delivers again and gets right up and into Snelling. Yeah, Snelling came up with a nice big hit last night. Didn't just he? Showed his, just showed his uh, major league experience there. Getting a ball that he can drive. Once again, picking a uh, a four-pitch walk there from from Millie. A little bit out of character for him the last, last two innings, but um, probably tried just to overthrow it a little bit to Snelling. Uh, Paul does get a little bit uh, competitive when uh, when he knows that someone of Snelling's uh, caliber or you know Luke Hughes comes up or someone like that, so he just overthrows it a little bit. So hopefully he'll regroup the next time he comes around. And Mona Roa, who came into the lineup last night. Playing first base. He also launched one long and deep over the shark net at right field and has a big swing at that breaking pitch from Mildred. So an 0-2 count on Mona Roa. Snelling on first. Nice little breaking pitch, but just a little low. As you look over to first base and Choi's uh, guarding, him, uh, guarding himself from the sun, it's a real tough time right now for first baseman and the second baseman and right fielder as he... Uh, Tries to line one over to him. It's a real tough time even getting the ball over from third base. They have to keep the ball down. Um, probably not a bad time to, you know, even kind of draw a pick off because it is really tough to see in between those lights. And I remember from playing first base for many years out here, there's been a couple of times where you just kind of just lose it a little bit and I'll be the first to put my hand up and say I missed a couple. Yeah, well. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's really one of those awkward times where you just try and keep them down, but it's a real tough time to, you know, try and draw it. And there's a shot into right field, but Rose just saw it off the bat and was all over it. And takes a routine little fly ball out at right field to finish the Blue Sox off in the top of the second. They still remain scoreless. And the Adelaide Bite will mount it up again in the bottom of the second with a one-run lead. We will have a short break and we will be back with you very soon.
So Adam Cam comes to the plate for the bite. Face Brad Thomas in the bottom of the second dig here. And although Adam hasn't exactly rock and rolled, he's doing okay. Picked up four hits and batting 500. That's pretty good. <laughs> A couple of infield hits, what's he, mind you, but yeah. hey. Hey, look, you know, he's just getting his groove on. He's only just come back as well. So, you know, a nice little pick up for Adelaide. And they're hoping to, he's going to be able to bring a little bit of power behind Choi and Quincy. Um, you know, the Adelaide Bite have got a pretty powerful lineup. you know, two versus, two through uh, two through eight, you know, with, with Roger batting nine last night. I know he's come up to hitting seven tonight, but, you know, having that kind of power, hitting seven, seven, six, five, and four, three, it's a... Uh, it's a big power lineup, there's no doubt. Just got to start showing it now. Yes, and with all teams nearly at uh, all pitches, probably well and truly in, in work now, and pitch restrictions gone. It's all systems go, and normally this last month of baseball is a pretty special month with all squads fully chopped. You know, Sydney's win last night uh, takes them up to second spot uh, in front of the Perth Heat, so they'd be looking to try and secure that home home final. Um, Perth, you know, still got a couple more games against Canberra as we see Cam strike out. Um, but Sydney will be looking definitely for a home final, and, and I'm sure the ABL will be looking for Sydney to have a home final as well at Blacktown. But um, I'm uh, sure... Perth Sure, the boys from the summer of baseball would be pretty keen for it too. To absolutely have some finals action. At some Black great Town coverage there. over there too, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, we've been singing their praises, Craig. So let's oh, not really? build them up too much. The boys <laughs> would be really, really happy no, with themselves. And Zroga just gets the first pitch that he drives out the centre right field, but. Quite easily taken by Chris Snelling out there. So Angus just str struggling a little bit, mate. He's um, just pressing, what we call pressing. Uh, thinking about it too much, getting up there, seeing a first pitch, you know, just getting uh, just getting jammed a little bit rather than seeing some balls early in the game. Just wanted to make contact early in the game, so you know he, he's certainly you know struggling. He knows it, but he's just going to kind of come through and uh, try and find the meat of the bat a couple of times tonight and get some confidence up coming in the last 12, 13 games of the season. Absolutely, and he went from a uh, he was red hot and and to hit and c continue on red hot form. And talking about red hot form, oh, Snelling takes an excellent catch, but. Just pulled up a fraction lame, maybe. <laughs> I just he, think he just took very long to pull up. Oh, he looks a little bit uh, yeah, He does ginger. look a bit ginger there, doesn't he? He might have just twinged a calf or something, I reckon. But uh, very slow to get off the diamond, the poor fella that's really struggled with some injuries. But he has a bit of fun with his mate. Yeah, he's So maybe it's all okay. He just might have clicked his heels on the way through. But anyway, that retires the bite. No addition to the scoreline here. It's still Adelaide Bite 1, Blue Sox, Zippo. And we'll be back real soon for the top of the third.
So the young Zach Shepard leads things off in the top of the third here for the the Blue Sox. He'll be getting ready for his under-18 tournament starting next week. Wow. So he's just turned, I think he's uh, 16 and a bit and just signed professionally with Detroit. Yeah, great thing. And obviously we've got Nick Hutchings. He's been doing a little bit of work here out of the pen for the bite and doing a terrific job that he'll be... Uh, number one starter for the SA under 18 so taking over quite a good side and obviously the usual stakes will be strong and I think we might go okay we've got some good pitching and it's going to be a really good series down there at Geelong Australian Nationals the under 16 under 18 in Geelong Victoria so if you're traveling and you're in in town drop in it's an absolutely fantastic Baseball stadium, four really good parks. And there's that pitch from Mildred that I was hoping not to see where he just gets just caught a little bit out of sync and gets one in the dirt. A full count as Mildred delivers and chops it onto the plate and it goes foul. Just a great thing this competition Craig, not only to give some stages a, a second chance at things and some young aspiring men that might have missed, missed it along the way another chance but also to create opportunities for Young fellas like Zach Shepard and Jacob Eunice and Ben Lodge. All those sorts of Nick Hutchings, all those sorts of kids that uh, get to play in a, a really good, solid competition. I'm sure Major League would be really happy with what's happening here and the oh, quality of doubt. baseball. Without a doubt. And that's why I was so, doubt, uh, so sad that, um, that we had, you know, that nine-year break with the ABL. You know, had the Claxton Shield and the and the small ABL showpieces that they had, but it really did pull a few careers short, and there was a lot of guys that, you know, possibly could have signed throughout that that, you know, would have been, you know, not picked up in those under-18 tournaments. The Australian, the Australian, you know, uh, kid, the baseballer, you know, traditionally does come up a little bit later, you know, just, just comes up a little bit later. That's through lack of baseball that they get, you know, they don't have the high school baseball or the college program here that the US have, and... Um, there are kids that just get better when they get to that 18, 19 mark that they grow and without the ABL around the scouts just didn't see them as much um, so they kind of missed out on, on getting a look in so it's disappointing there's probably you know probably 40 or 50 guys in the last nine years that didn't sign that probably could have if they had been seen or stayed with the game because this level was around but uh, now we've got it back as you were saying it's great for these kids and they come through and you a perfect example, you have a look at Jackson Bre Brebner Russ from Adelaide, hasn't had much show time, but you know, he was an under 18 kid that was that had the world at his feet and and uh, now he's made the team for the first time this this or last weekend and um, you now hopefully he'll get a bit of a showcase at you know nineteen twenty, which is good. Top three here. Adelaide Bite leading it one to nothing. As Eunice hits a foul ball along the right field line. That drops foul for a strike. So a 2 2 count. Shepard led things off with a walk, so he's sitting on first base and we saw last night he's got some wheels he can get down along those base paths is another one and Eunice who flew out a couple of times to right field last night and a really good catch there by Roger it, he was playing him in a little bit suspecting that he didn't have much pop and Jacob got a little bit more on it than he, he believed he could and he had to 
get his way back and with that sun shining that was an excellent catch yeah, it was Angus just playing in a little bit there and uh, as you said he kind of got back on a little bit just checked to where see where he was up against the fence and just took his eye off a little bit and made a good catch at the end JD Williams is another flying machine. We continue to discuss how it's not discussed as much as it should be speed in baseball, but it is a real factor in this game. And JD, and there's an attempted breaking pitch by Mildred. So 1-1 one, one count on JD. With one out here. There's a pick off. One of Millie's favourites. He loves the pick off and he's very good at it. He's got a, like most pitchers have, he's got their routine little move just to say, yep, yeah, that's, that's about the best I've got. But they keep their best one for when they need it. And he comes again. And Williams hoiks that one around the corner. Foul. So just at this time of the night, contending with the, the shadows and some direct sunlight on the right side of the diamond. But everyone at the moment doing well as Mildred delivers again. And just an excellent located fastball on the outside edge. A little bit of tail and he strikes Williams out. One of your favourite songs, Spurlo, as you sit there and jig along, mate. Fantastic. Some really good uh, music and atmosphere here at Nord Oval tonight. It's excellent. You can stop jigging now. So song stopped. Good piece of catching there by Chris. Just keeps uh, Shepard at first base there. Tough pitch to handle. Yeah, you've been doing an absolutely mountain of a job Chris Adamson he was flipping with Dylan Child before Dylan got a little bit of a arm injury and just been having a little bit of time off and Adamson courageous character that he is said okay well here's my chance then and instead of looking a little tired or not having the fitness he's just gone from strength to strength and he's also been batting along with it so he's doing a terrific job and on a 1-1 one, one count with two out so we hear a couple of Sydney supporters shout out for a balk I'd like to know how they can tell from up here but uh, at least they're into the game no they were pretty happy last night nice guys I wave to them <laughs> on the way up and said pretty happy with the win and and they were, as Shepard goes, and that ball's crushed into left field, ground ball. Right in the 6-5 hole. As Sydney pick up their first hit for the game. And puts uh, Shepard in scoring position. And good to see Pen Pros back in the lineup. After a little bit of a, a glitch last night. It, I'm still trying to work out that what, what that was, actually. Yeah. I, I, I'm not really sure. I mean, I saw I saw it from down there, and, uh, you know, it didn't seem too much to me. And, and um, Didn't hear any verbal? No, there was no verbal at all. It was just a little bat flip that, you know, he got frustrated himself. It wasn't any bad calls from the umpire There was because he swung at all three pitches. So it was just a little bat flip, and the bat got away from him, and the umpire thought that it was... Bit of uh, equipment abuse, I suspect. Well, well, I didn't he, even he did smash these back to the ground. Yeah, I didn't but, think but it would, really. I didn't think it was a rule actually in ABL. I know that they have got it in the SABL, but certainly not in the ABL. Um, that ball's too hard. In. 
Just a loose cake going here. Rogue it. Just offline. Yep, so the Blue Sox are on the board via a base hit to the number three here to Mitch Denning. RBI single for Denning. So he just does what he does best. Mitch who's had previously picked up a couple of hits over the series in a war. Batting about 280. Probably just going up to about 350 there. Yeah. <laughs> the quick rough calculating. Rough calculation. Yeah, so I would suggest. So now with runners in the corners and two out. Mounting oh, a two out rally. And, and that, that ball, ball is, is way back. Crashed. That ball is out of here. So James Robbins hits a three run dinger. And wow. He got all of that. And as I said before, he's a funny sort of hitter that he his numbers reflect a lot of strikeouts and all that sort of thing. But when he hits them, they stay hit. And he just smashed that over the right field fence. Three-run bomb. So a big two-out rally here for the Blue Sox in the top of the third. Sees them take a 4-1 lead. You're yeah, not Paul. What, what Paul or the uh, the Adelaide Bite wanted. And Klein goes first pitch for a base hit out to right field. Millie's just got to settle down, compose himself now. You're all happening a little bit too quickly. Yeah. And good stuff that well she comes in and... Adamson goes out, just have a quick chat, just to slow things down, nothing nothing too much to say, just give the give the veteran a little bit of a break. It's amazing how things can just change so quickly. I mean Paul was working downstairs and getting his change up and slider down and away and in some good spots. And then all of a sudden a bit of back-to-back -back hitting and, and there's a good breaking pitch by Mildred for strike one. And gets one upstairs. Ball one. To Mildred again. Gets a good breaking pitch and Choi absorbs the blow as he was having to come straight off the bag. He copped it in the hand, but fortunately knocked it down and made the out. Big strong work by the big man at first base. So the Blue Sox have an excellent dig in the top of the third. Score four to go to a 4 1 lead. Have a short break. We'll see you real soon.
Don't forget to get your extra gear for promotions unlimited. Over on Sweepstakes, get over to the merchandise booth, get your dollar extra gear. You win $200 in buy merchandise thanks to promotions unlimited. You are part of the success of your promotion, then your promotions unlimited. Leading off for your Adelaide Flyers, second base for number six, Josh Capebread. Welcome back to the uh, bottom of the third inning. So we see Josh break cake bread. Lead off for the Adelaide bite. Starting to hit the ball really well at the moment. Hitting the ball to the left side quite consistently and hard. He takes the first pitch for a strike from Thomas. Just checks his swing for a ball on the outside part of the plate. Seeing the count one and one. Big swing and a miss by Josh. Brings the count to one and two. The leadoff hitter for the Adelaide bite. Adelaide will be looking to get a uh, couple of runs here just to try and stem it, bring the bring that lead a little bit closer as Josh swings at a ball in the dirt, sees him strike out for the first out for the Adelaide Bite in the third inning. We go back to the top of the line, now shortstop, number 23, Nate Melendrez. So we see Nate Melendrez come up here after having a nice hit in the first inning. Be looking to see if he can get it done again. Start something off here for the Adelaide Bites. He swings at the first pitch, a slow roll over to third base. Ball fired over there by Zach Shepard. Adelaide Bite with two out. And young Ben Lodge coming up to bat now. So see Lodgy take the first pitch for a strike down the middle. Very patient hitter, Lodgy. Always likes to see the first pitch. Takes strike two, slider on the inside part of the plate. Just catches on the inside there. Good pitch there by Brad Thomas. A ball inside, just nearly catches Lodgy there, coming up in high for ball one. So the count we see here, one ball, two strikes on Ben Lodge. Two out with the Adelaide Bite. And he takes strike three, off-speed pitch on the outside part of the plate. It's three out for the Adelaide Bite. Great inning by Brad Thomas. Sees the Sydney Blue Sox put another zero on the board as we go into the top of the fourth. And we'll just take a little break right now and be back with the uh, top of the fourth very shortly.
So welcome back everyone. Top four. Blue Sox got away to a good start here with a 4-1, 4-1 one, four one lead. Thanks mostly to a James Robbins three-run shot in the last dig. And we've given Watsy a little bit of a spell. And we've brought in Jim Manning, who's a fella that's been involved in baseball in this state for a long, long time and probably more famously known as doing a lot of our uh, announcing here for all live games and was just saying he's going to miss tomorrow and that's your first game you're going to miss in about how many years, Jim? About, about three years of this series anyway. <laughs> well, welcome, Jim. Great to have you up here with us. And Thank I know you very you're an absolute baseball fanatic. Is Mona Roa... Picks our base on balls. Yeah. Been a pretty good series so far. Well, when you consider this is the seventh game uh, that Sydney Blue Sox and Adelaide Bight have met each other in the last uh, uh, two weeks, and uh, all of them have been uh, pretty close affairs, actually. And uh, so it's been a, a great tussle with the Sydney Blue Sox, I must say. Yeah, I think Ben said on Friday night that after that four-game series in Sydney, it was 18 all or something like that, just to give you a bit of an indication how tight it was. But it was a 3-1 series victory to, to Sydney. So, Yes, unfortunately, Sydney has uh, gotten over the top of Adelaide and uh, uh, that's been a fairly indicative part of our season, unfortunately. But... Uh, uh, the baseball has been uh, absolutely magnificent to watch. As we see on our vision that uh, Wally Marks, the pitching coach for the bite, just coming out to have a bit of a natter. And as we alluded to pre-game, that Paul's been a little bit, just a little out of sorts with his mechanics. I know he wouldn't mind me saying that. He's a very honest young man and just know that it's just not quite happening for him at the moment and started in a blaze of glory but just had a little moment in the last dig single seven single nine home run nine single nine enough to just pile up four runs and put a little bit of pressure on him and he just needs to restock and come again because it's important he goes as deep as possible into this game for us absolutely and uh, we know one thing about Paul Mildred he will be giving it his all and there's a pitch up and out, ball one, to Zach Shepard, who picked a walk at his first at-bat, playing third base tonight, so a very versatile young man. And he picks another walk. As we speak, a little bit of preparatory action in the bite pen. So Mildren right now in control of his own destiny and got to use all of his experience. Really get his mechanics strong and get some rhythm and get back where he was in the first couple of digs, having the ball down and had a couple of get out pitches working for him. So he fires a fastball strike into Eunice. We said a beautiful day here. We've gone from 40 plus temperature down to 30 and it actually feels like a little cool day to be honest. It's feeling very good and it's a great night here, a great night for baseball. I think anything was better than last night. As Eunice shapes the bunt. Looking a little bit like Darren Fidge is going to be warming up in the bullpen for the Adelaide Bite. <laughs> 
So two strikes on Jacob Eunice. Eunice, it's a long fly ball. Quincy Lattimore using his speed and skill. Took that ball right on the fence in centre right field and with a lovely spin turn fires the ball back in and although it be the big boss on second, that was an opportunity to tag and go but Quincy played it beautifully. Got a very important out for Mildred and equally as importantly kept the runners as they were at first and second. So one out here. The JD top. Williams coming back to the top of the lineup. <laughs> Following a fly eight and a K2. In his first two appearances. Takes the first called strike and uh, just questioning Mark Wilson as to where that might have been crossing the play. Mm, there's a good pitch by Mildred. A slider started down the middle of the plate and busted in on JD. Committed to the swing and it certainly looked like a pitch that you should be swinging at. That broke inside and well handled again by Adamson. Collected out of the dirt and kicked the runners as they are. So an 0 2 count on Williams. Mildred. Fastball, little up. Ball one. So Mildred again from the set delivers, gets a pitch inside and just so much to be said for a catcher that supports his pitcher, allowing him to keep the ball down and even get it in the dirt and know that he's going to be supported by his catcher. It's uh, again something that we don't always give an enormous amount of credit to but right at the moment Paul's trying to keep the ball down and he must be able to throw it knowing that his catcher will support him and Adamson's doing a great job and there's the result strike out on Williams Now Andrew I want to know is Zach Penpray is actually a frustrated tennis player or is he a frustrated baseballer I was watching him warm up earlier this evening and uh, he gave uh, an amazing fantasy tennis game out there for us all yeah, well, he uh, might have been giving his uh, McEnroe impersonation or something like that. But, yeah, it was a bit unusual. <laughs> but, hey, he's... Uh, was certainly an appreciative audience. Absolutely, and it's nice to see a guy that had a bit of a funny day yesterday not come out grumpy that he looked like he came out today's another day with a nice, fresh attitude. And well, I certainly think he got it off his chest last night. Yeah, he sure did. And he's already picked up a base hit tonight, which he'd be really pleased. And he rips that ball to shortstop Melendrez. Hung back on it, but with some nice soft hands, took it. And flipped it over to Kate Brett at second base for an easy out. And again, Zach just chucked his helmet and standing there with hands on hips. He's a, he's a fired up character. We'll finish it there. It's the... Uh, Completion of top four. We'll be back with you real soon.
So leading off we have uh, Steph Welsh who had a pretty impressive first at bat. Taking the first called strike. And that one uh, sneaking up the inside and uh, taking him on the thigh. <laughs> Seeing him take first base with a hit pitch ball. That brings to the bank plate the one and only G-Man Choi. Well outside for G-Man for ball one. I was just about to mention prior to that pitch hitting Welsh, how Thomas looked like he really was working into a good groove, but as he got that pitch outside to Choi, he stumbled off the mound. and So I'm glad I kept that to myself. <laughs> it's Choi. It's a ground ball. Eunice to Penprace. Into Robbins for a double play, four to six to three. Gemlin's grounded to second base quite a bit over this series. Or six to three, six to three, single four, four to three. So Quincy Lattimore coming to the plate. It's nice to see him back in Adelaide and uh, for the second part of the season. And he goes long and deep to straight away centre field. That ball is gone. Quincy Lattimore hits a solo bomb. So welcome back, Quincy. And in the process, centre fielder Mitch Denning has just bashed out a couple of panels in centre field, which I'm sure our cameraman Pete White would be having a look at. And that's immediately going to cause a little issue here whilst we do a bit of repairs so whilst i have that opportunity i'll just plug one of our sponsors in the great duck dare air conditioning south australian manufacturer and i can't stress enough for us all to take that into consideration when we're in the process of purchasing that they're a superb south australian manufacturer and a carbon neutral company and if you are in the market for air conditioning, have a look at the ducted air conditioning from Duck Dare. And if you purchase, they'll give you a free upgrade to their university tested, fully labelled energy smart system when you purchase any ducted air conditioning system. So it's a really important thing to remember. If you buy a mid range, you'll be upgraded if you mention the Moots or the 10th inning. So it's a fantastic thing that so you'll not only save some money on your purchase, but you will also get money back as the months go on in a very energy smart system. So we thank Duck Dare Air Conditioning greatly. And as I said, we can't stress enough that you, if you're in the market, you give them an opportunity. We'll just take a short break while we're doing some repairs here. And we'll be back with you very shortly.
Well, well, after the uh, running repairs to the home run fence, uh, we're back here at Norwood Oval, and the designated hitter, Adam Cam, comes to the plate. The first Cam. pitch fouled away. Immediately made an adjustment there after swinging through a couple of off-speed pitches from Thomas at his previous at-bat. Just hung back a little bit and you could see an adjustment, but there again he's up at, against a quality individual. And Thomas knows he's got him, he's in his head and he's got him thinking. And now I would even imagine a fastball across the letters might be good enough to have him swing. So Thomas delivers again and another superb slider. Didn't waste a pitch. Came straight at him in a perfectly executed pitch. Says au revoir to Cam. Not before the bite score a run in the bottom of the fourth to take it to a 4-2 ball game. Because that's when Brad Thomas is at his best. When he gets ahead in the count, um, he's a pretty hard man to deal with out there. So... Uh, Again, a couple of great pitches, uh, quickly ahead in the count and uh, finished it off uh, with Adam watching the last one cross the plate. We've also a uh, quick yell out to MC Sportswear, another great supporter of, of us, the 10th inning, but also the Adelaide Bite organisation. So we, uh, everything, baseball and softball, down there at MC Sportswear, corner of Port and Woodville Road. You jump in and see Grant and his team, and again mention that the 10th inning sent you. They will look after you and give you a little bit of discount and maybe a little added extra. They're a great team down there and a terrific shop, and again, another locally owned and operated organisation. It's just wonderful to see. I'd just like to acknowledge the Summer of Baseball people up in Sydney. I uh, must say we had a bit of fun last series uh, with a little bit of Twitter banter going on backwards and forwards while they're up there. So uh, uh, it's nice for me to be here tonight and uh, calling the game here in Adelaide uh, after a little bit of fun last week. The Twitter world, of course, is always a buzz with baseball and uh, there's a lot of people who keep up with the game and the local banter on Twitter and uh, it's a, a good way of keeping across what's going across uh, the, all of the clubs right now. So James Robbins back at the uh, plate leading off for the Sydney Blue Sox. My apologies, it's Mitch Denning. Might have well have been James Robin with a huge first hack at the first pitch that he swung through after Robin's put one into orbit at his last at bat and Denning's popped one up. Major League pop fly into centre field and Lattimore gleefully accepts the catch. So now we see James Robbins. <laughs> and statistically, he's, uh, he's not exactly stacking up, but um, wow, when you got the pop and the power of this man. And as I said, even though his stats didn't, he, he looked dangerous and he checked swings and they asked the question, but are denied. So ball one. Is Mildred, and there's a broken bat shot, but deep and long. Lattimore goes back to warning track in centre field and takes another catch, and not a bad shot for a broken bat. Indeed. Lattimore getting a bit of a workout out there in centre field in the last uh, three outs heading out his way. And now batting is the catcher, Jeff Klein. be a terrific 
dig to get through for Mildred if he can work his way through and get a donut on the board it might be enough to keep him rolling Fidge is certainly in the process of getting hot in the pen so the pitching change is imminent unless Paul has a very quick dig here and he's on the way with two outs And he delivers again, and Klein gets a pitch low that he pulls around the third base line foul. Oh, again, he locates inside, and that ball's ripped around the corner. Klein mimicking to himself to try to keep those hands inside the ball and put it in the field of play instead of rolling that barrel around, which is exactly what Mildred wanted him to do and got himself his 0-2 count. Now for something dirty. And there's a good located pitch. And again, Lattimore will do the job for the bite with three catches in the outfield and an excellent inning by Paul Mildred. Nice, cheap, economical dig as we complete five. Sydney Blue Sox leading the way, four to two. We will have a short break and we'll be back with you real soon. So we're back here for the bottom of the fifth innings. The Adelaide Bite leading off is Angus Roger. Leading off your Adelaide Bite, right through to Angus Roger. Angus flew out to left field, or right field, his first at bat. Just missed the barrel. Looking to get something going here, hoping to take a couple of pitches. A couple of good swings on it. Takes the first pitch on the outside part of the plate for ball one. Big swing and a miss. Good swing by Angus. Brings the count to one and one. Takes ball two on the outside part of the plate. Angus.
Mustang is trying to get something started here for the Adelaide bite. Down by two. Takes ball three inside. Nearly takes the back end of his knee off. Bit of fancy footwork there. Count three and one. That ball is way back on the left. And a great at bat by Angus Roser if he hits a home run. As he hits a home run over the left field fence, an absolute laser. Straight over the DMC direct mail center. Part of the fence. He gets the Adelaide bite within one. Sydney Blue Sox up 4-3. A great home run here by Angus Roger. This has been uh, rather significant in the uh, Adelaide bite Sydney Blue Sox competition. Uh, tussling it right out. Someone will get ahead. Next thing we're tied up again and... Uh, we're doing it again here tonight at Norwood Oval. No, you're right on it, Jim. It's uh, always been a really good competition against Sydney for many, many years. Even back into the old ABL days, there's always been a great rivalry between the two teams. Some good ball games being played for a long, long time. And tonight's no exception. That'd be great for Angus's confidence too, Jim. For him to... Uh, you get that ball, nice nice at bat too, three and one, waiting for that fast ball. So we see Chris flow one out in the foul territory. Oh, and Ellie came back in too, and everyone had given up on it. He's actually quite lucky not to uh, <laughs> get, land that ball in. No one was running though, he was still at the plate. So he must have been confident. I think it had everyone uh, all ends up down there, including Chris, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so one ball, two strikes. Ball two on the inside, and uh, Jeff Klein having to dig that one out of the dirt. Doing a pretty good job there, actually, Jeff. Chris fouls that one over to the right side. Good at bat again here by Chris. Not only doing a great job behind the dish for the Adelaide Bite, but also picking up some pretty crucial hits and RBIs throughout the year as well. Doing a really good job catching most of the season now. As he lines one out to left field. Nice base hit, something to back up the home run by Angus Roger just to get it settled a little bit. So we're in good sport. Good position right now, Jim, with the runner at first base and Josh Cakebread up the bat. Might be looking at maybe a little small ball here from Tony Harris. We'll see what happens. Josh comes around to bunt, takes the ball on the outside part of the plate for ball one. Don't know whether that was an attempted running bunt or a little sack bunt, but he took the pitch, which was good, Jim. Josh has uh, certainly shown his ability in the last little while at uh, the short game. <laughs> Probably one, of the, on the dirt. probably one of the best executed slug bunts I've seen for a while. A couple of games back here at Norwood. Is that where his dad gets a nick nickname from, Jim? Or <laughs> the old slug, number seven? That'd be the man. A big cut from Josh Cakebread. 
I don't think the bunt's on anymore. <laughs> so the count, two balls and one strike from Josh. Small lead over there by Chris. Oh, that ball's hit him. It's always one of the problems when a left-handed hitter, left-handed hitter, right-handed thrower, you know, cops one around that area there. That might have just missed his elbow, but I know the one before to uh, Stefan Welsh kind of got him on the arm a little bit. It's a pretty important part of their game, especially middle infielders or in any part of baseball, really, when their, their lead arm is their, is their throwing arm. So uh, really hard to protect it and, and free up that swing. But what we see here now is runners at first and second with none out. And Nate Melendez up to bat. So we may see a bit of short ball again. Not really sure on how Tony's going. He played a bit of short ball early in the game. And uh, now with the runners at first and second with none out and his leadoff guy up to bat. I would suspect that uh, Sydney will be playing in for it, as I can see they are. And see what Tony's got in store for us now. And he takes the first pitch for a strike. He did come around. The one strike on Nate Melendez. Comes around a bunt, places it nicely. He's going to go to third base for the out. Not an ideal bunt by Nate, straight back to the pitcher. Everyone was waiting for it. Everybody in Adelaide, even maybe in Perth and Sydney, knew that bunt was coming down. So there was no hidden secret there that that's what the Sydney Blue Sox were playing for, was a force out to third base. And uh, the only thing that changes now is there's an out. One out with runners on first and second, and Ben Lodge up to bat. Strings at the first pitch, low, bit of a breaking ball there. One strike on Ben Lodge. Oh, straight through the third baseman. Oh. Very interesting piece of base running and coaching there by Mark Chandler. Basically stood in the middle of the of third baseline there, stopping Cake Bread from going. It's almost a bit of a tackle, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Ultimately, it was probably the right call, but I don't know whether it was executed that well. <laughs> So the bases are loaded as Stefan Welsh faces the first pitch. Outside for ball one. Steph will be looking to drive in a couple of runs here, no doubt. Good time for him to step up. Catch taken in right field by Chris Snelling. Uh, in shallow uh, right field, which uh, held all the runners up. So we're two away. Coming to the plate now will be G-Man Choi. Yeah, unlucky there, Steph Welsh. Hit an absolute P-Rod out there to Chris Snelling. Chris Snelling coming in a little bit. There was no way in the world that uh, there was going to be any sack fly opportunity there. 
Good base running by Cake Bread to hold up there. Troy takes the first pitch up high for ball one. So loaded bases, two out. Troy looking to convert one of these runners, at least one of these runners, to come over here. It takes a big hack. Here it comes, Lopes. That's an SA Power Networks. Power ball. And that ball's nearly hit my wife and my young fella down there. <laughs> His first, his first baseball game at six months of age, and he might have caught one. He probably would have caught it. He's that big at the moment. <laughs> the little man, the little man, nearly caught one in his first game. Yeah, everyone was defending him. I could see. <laughs> Troy takes ball two. Ball two. two balls, one strike. Ball three. Ball three. So we see the base is loaded. Full count on Troy. See the runners going here. As he takes ball four. And that brings a visit to the plate um, from the Sydney Blue Sox. Tied ball game here at Norwood Oval, four runs apiece with Quincy Lattimore in, on deck. Quincy been full of confidence after his last at bat. He's so much a confidence hitter. Now he's got his first one under his belt. He'll be looking to consolidate and get a nice base hit somewhere. Score a couple of more here for the Adelaide Bite in the bottom of the fifth. The big Q, the big Q walks, struts up to home plate as he does. The big man. Pass ball. Wild pitch by Brad Thomas. Sees Nate Melendrez cross the plate. Brings the lead to Adelaide Bite, five to four. And still the big cue. Hard to plate with two runners in scoring position. Great opportunity here for Adelaide Bite. What a great inning. One ball, no strikes, two out. Oh, he's hit. I'm going to have to say that might have had a little bit of an intentional on it. Open base. Hit a home run the last at bat. 
Just getting a little warning there from the umpire, maybe. No one seems to be fired up. But uh, just a bit of baseball love, I would suggest there, Jim. <laughs> a little the unwritten rule, the unwritten the rule that we play by. So designated hitter, Adam Cam, comes to the plate, two away. The bite leading five runs to four and bases loaded. Ball one, low on on the outside. Adam Cam, shallow fly ball out to centre field, taken easily He's out there. Adelaide Bight the the come up with three five runs to have a 5-4 lead going into the top of the six. We're going to take a little break right now and we'll see you back here for the top of the six. So welcome back everyone after a big four run dig by the bite in the bottom of the fifth. They regain the lead five to four in what we're expecting between these two teams. They're a battle right to the end and a couple of emails here from a couple of great buddies and pals of ours. Cameron Hickson, one of the summer of baseball boys and just yelling out to say good day and giving us a bit of praise which is always nice mate. So thank you very much for that. And also Megan, Megan Borg, who's been online with us and loving what we're doing and a real avid supporter of the Blue Sox. So thanks, Megan, again. And yes, we know who rocks, Megan. The Blue Sox rock. But hopefully you can subdue your rocking for just a little moment as we roll into the sick dig here and Millie after a little reprieve and a real taking his get out of jail card in the fifth, he, he rolls on, which is great to see because we need him to get to some deep innings for us. And all of a sudden, as quickly as he lost his rhythm, he's regained it. And he has a 1-1 count here on leadoff Snelling. And it pitches outside, ball two. And Mildred gets one up. Snelling with a walk and a put out the three tonight. Hard hit ball that one. It careered into the midriff of Choi at first base, who was skilled enough to bring it to ground and put him out. And Snelling picks up another walk. So I'd say after last night that. Paul will be on a little short leash here. I wouldn't imagine it'll go too far if things get a little wayward. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, you, you're looking at uh, the pen over there, working pretty hard. Fiji over there, throwing, getting himself pretty hot. So uh, Tony wouldn't be wanting to see 
see too much happening here. See if he can just regain some of that rhythm that he finished off with last inning. Starts, starts off with a strike. It's a big boss, Manoroa. So a terrific game again here. Bike got off to an early lead, scored one in the first. Blue Sox via a James Robbins blast, three run blast. Took a 4 1 lead in the third. Bite bit back with one in the fourth. And then responded with. Well, I had it down as four more, but maybe only three more for a 5 4 for a one run lead. No, boss, a bit of a free swinger. Certainly can put something, put a uh, bit of a charge in one when he gets a hold of it, as he showed last night. As he takes ball two high. See the count, two and two to Boss. Runner at first base, Chris Snelling. Probably not a running threat tonight after just pulling up a bit lame out there at right field. So okay. this would be Millie's last hitter. As Monaroa goes inside out, it's a, a pop-up that you don't often see Steph not pick it up off the bat, but he lost that one and it ended up bouncing about 10 metres back over his head in a catch it normally be a red-hot chance to take. Still with the lighting and just if you just miss it with a... A blink off the bat. That's the sort of thing that can happen. So Mildred comes again to Monaroa and excellent change up and gets the boss swinging through it, strikes him out. And as we were talking about, Tony Harris makes his way out to the mound to grab the ball from his starting pitcher and Paul Mildred. He did a fantastic job, just had that one little blemish inning, really, and uh, it's come up really, really well. He should be pretty happy with. Not only his own performance, but the guys behind him giving him a bit of run support. And as the uh, veteran is replaced by the elder veteran in Darren Fidge, do their little pleasantries at, uh, on the mound. And Tony Harris hands the ball over to Darren Fidge and saying, go get him, mate. I'll take an opportunity to have a little chat about the Colts Baseball Academy, one of our great sponsors. Peter Fisher, Brian Cake, Red Ron Harvey, the main coaches down there, and they really emphasise on the 8 to 12 year old range of, of lad. So if you're at home and you've got a real aspiring young lad who's loving playing the game, you could do a lot worse and send them down to those gents and really get their fundamentals set right in place because there's no doubt, Watsy, that really between that age the 10 and 12 year old is where you really set your skills in place in this game of baseball you can always make some changes and but if you really set some solid foundations at a young age it's extremely important so the Colts Baseball Academy all their contact details on our website at the 10th innings so jump on and enroll your boy they finish off with a top class trip to the States in July where you venture into some major league ballparks and some massive baseball colleges it would just be a trip of a lifetime Craig? Oh absolutely you know you've got a couple of great coaches there too that really do you know have been around the game for a long long time and coached at senior level at national junior level at state junior level and uh, for them to be in charge of such a good program for some, some young fellas and, and I, I guess I think there's a couple of females out there too from what I can remember going out there this year that's uh you know, it's, it's a really good opportunity for the for these young young baseball players to, as you said, to start their career and, and just learn a little bit more than just the average uh, the average um, club coach. So uh, excellent organisation, the Colts Baseball Academy. So we got Darren Fidge replacing Paul Mildred on the mound, and we're seeing that Fidge's 
really dropped that arm slot down. He has, he has. He looked at doing it about two years ago and uh, just didn't work for him uh, a couple of years ago. He still had a bit of pop over the top, so we brought him back up the top, but he really has dropped down now, so it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of velocity and, and control that, that Darren has. But knowing Darren so well, that there's no doubt that he would have been working on it for a while. It wouldn't be something he's just just decided to do. He would have been working on it with Tony Harris and, and, and uh, Warwick Marks. As he goes over the top there uh, to Choi, <laughs> nearly throws one away. But he'll be looking at, you know, keeping these guys off balance as we talk about, you know, getting away with a couple of innings here for Adelaide, keeping him in the game. So Fiji rolled a very slow slider over for a strike and then pops a fastball in there, exactly as Craig broadcast, that to uh, just trying to keep them off the off balance a little, and he gets another oh, he flipper leafus, in there. The leafus pitch. Leafus. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go, it's for everyone. Man at 37, 38 years old, I'm not exactly sure, 38. But Only mate, high school boy. Still making some changes in this great game of baseball. Uh, it goes to show when you keep fit as much as Darren Fidge does, he's, uh, he's able to, the able body, I mean, he's just as fit as any of the 19, 18 year old kids out there and, and uh, his arm strength is still there. So let's see if he can Keep it going here for the Adelaide bite. As he just loses it a little bit here and goes to a three and two count. So Zach Shepard wouldn't have even been thought of when Darren pitched his first pitch for the Adelaide Giants. I reckon Darren started his career at 16 too, so mm, well, as he strikes him out on a pitch on the inside part of the plate, he wasn't overly happy with that pitch. But Darren says, I've thrown a lot more baseballs than you've ever seen in your life, son. Sit down. Zach will get his chance many, many more times, I would think, over his career. Good, solid hitter. But that time, it belonged to Darren Fidge. So a good start by Fidge, working out of the pen and doing some middle relief. I think they'd have it as he gets Eunice flying out to left field. and Oh, that ball's dropped it. in for a double. Runners are going to hold up at second and third. That ball just carried a little bit. Yeah, sure did. I, I thought that was a bit of a jam shot out there to left field, but no, it just kept going and going and going. And a ground rule double. As sees the runners said. hold up at third base. As we said about Jacob in an earlier at bat where they were playing him in a little, thinking that he uh, had minimal pop, but uh, he got a bit on one, a shot out to right field that was taken, but as he said, we looked like he got that off the fist a little bit, yeah. but he got plenty on it. A lot of these young guys, are, or the smaller kind of stature guys, what they have is very, very thick legs, very Scott Tunkin-like back in the day for those Sydney Blue Sox fans that remember Scotty Tunkin at second base. Similar kind of stature, lots of power, especially with that aluminium bat at a Parramatta Stadium. See Jacob Eunice with his double for the night. Darren Fidge comes back with a strike to Williams. So we're interactive with you folks, always. So if you've got a shout out for your club or you'd just like to get on this broadcast we're more than welcome to oblige so live baseball at the 10th innings.com.au always fun to interact as JD gets a chopper and Welsh superb job at third base came across on a ball that was going to split the diff with shortstop but doing what a good third baseman did and went across got it on the second hop Whip one over to first base where Choi at full stretch helped him out with a nice receive to get rid of JD Williams and complete the top of the sixth and the bite still lead it five to four. Short break. See you soon.
Blue pitcher for the Blue Sox, Wayne Lundgren. As we come into the bottom of the six with a pitching change for Sydney, Wayne Lundgren pitching for Sydney Blue Sox, Wayne Lundgren. Leading off for the Adelaide Bite is Angus Rozier who hit a absolute linear line drive out the left field to start off what was Adelaide Bites three run uh, three run inning be looking to do the same thing he does get a hold of it Line drive out to centre field. Mitch Denning just misreads that a little bit. But still takes the, gets the out. One out for the Adelaide Bite. Chris Adamson now hitting for the Bite. Chris has had a couple of good at-bats tonight. Line drive in the first in the second inning and came up with a nice base hit followed after uh, Angus's home run starting to hit, see and hit the ball very well so the big heavy throwing Lundgren he does throw the ball hard there's no doubt there always has tall very big, tall lad. Yeah. Huge, long legs. That's a routine ground ball to Eunice for a routine four to three. Is he Steve Sachs that over there? Is Steve Sachs sidearm over the first baseman for the second out? Two out for the Adelaide Bite and Josh Cakebread looking to get something started here in the bottom of the sixth for the Bite. Brad Thomas went five inning, six hits, five walks, six Ks, five runs. And his opposite number, Mildred, went five and a third for four hits, five walks, five Ks, four runs. So a really tight little duel between the two starters. They both did a good job, got more than halfway through the game for their teams. So now, again, it comes back to the pen. As Kate Brett also rolls over and one and Eunice comes in and also makes a neat little out to retire the bite and complete six. We have the Adelaide bite five, the Blue Sox four. Have a short break. See with the top of the seventh in a minute or two.
So welcome back everyone, top seven. Quick shout out to one of our great sponsors in Marshall Batteries, old Johnny Beach, a great friend of ours and Melbourne based, but the Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide branches have all come on board with us. So obviously to all you Sydney siders in the big vast expanse of the Sydney, New South Wales, absolutely whenever you get stuck on the side of the road there's only one thing to do jim holler for a marshal you betcha baby holler for a marshal so we resume with andrew kittridge replacing fidge who did a little bit of short relief and Penprose who liked an up and in fastball and he swung straight through it for strike one Kittredge tries to work a slider over and a little up and a little out for ball one. So a little change for Kittredge the last series. And there's a nice pitch for a strike two. He'd been doing the closing duties. Kittridge on a 1-2 count. This pen pros hits that right into the fascia of the grandstand and it bounced down right near the announcers with all of their magnificent equipment. As Kittridge again gets a breaking pitch inside and it's a two bouncer to Welsh. He makes the out. And retires Penprose. Brings to the plate centre fielder Mitch Denning. Denning with a four to three and a single to nine and a pop fly to centre field. Also crashed through the fence out there at centre field and cleaned up a couple of panels. Big powerful unit that he is. Superb outfielder. Just a good all round baseballer and something you can build your team around. And as again he pops one up and. Welsh says I'll take it, but Melendrez is in better spot. Short stop directly behind him. Took a while for him to make the call, but as all as you're instructed as a youngster, you don't make a call until that ball reaches its peak. So although it may look like there was a little bit of confusion, he just let it get right to the top before he called Welshy out and took an infield pop flight. Two away, now batting first baseman James Robbins. Well, she have men like Denning, Robbins, Snelling, Monaroa in your lineup. A one run lead looks very, very feeble. So there's still a lot of baseball to be played. There's Kittredge fires in a little cutter that just missed the outside part of the plate. And again, the big, strong right-hander delivers. And, and he may not absolutely be throwing 92, 93 mile an hour, but he's a, he throws a heavy ball. He certainly... Uh Keeps them uh, on their toes, so uh, uh, variation seems to be his forte. He's again working from the set, and that ball's just driven up the middle by Robbins for a very, very nicely hit single to centre field. Jeff Klein comes to the plate, and uh, all I can say, he's always dangerous when he comes up to bat. It's 
switch hitter. So very talented. This Done all the catching duties thus far for the Sox and swung left or swung right, whatever the need be. This is his fourth at bat with a 5-3 to three out in the first. Safe to nine. And then a fly to eight. And a very big cut at the first pitch. And as Jim said, Kittredge changing things up a little bit with a nice breaking pitch that he had a big swing and a miss at. And Gezi locates a nice fastball downstairs for strike two, so immediately gets ahead with an 0-2 count, two out. Top of the seventh, Adelaide bite five. Sydney Blue Sox four. Very, very tight ball game as it was last night. And I got a feeling we're going right down to the wire again. And they set up with a semi waste pitch. He, Adamson crept outside of the plate and Kittredge smashed the glove, but he was just a few inches off the plate. The Kittredge declined with Robbins and he checked swings on the pitch a little up and a little out. He looked like he was going after it but some strong hands and good mechanics and sweated off on that pitch for a 2-2 count. Jeff Klein always sets up with a very open stance. It always intrigues me how his first step is back, actually back into the plate. Tears one foul down the first baseline. Doesn't matter which side of the plate he is, it's always that uh, that front foot is uh, always pointed either out to left or right field, depending on which side of the plate he is. Yeah, it's become very popular in the big league. It's very open stance, but at the end of the day, if you end up in the right spot, I suppose it really doesn't matter how you start. And I suppose as he pops oh, one up the into the shark tank over there and it's a stack tank tonight over there Jim a very full uh, shark tank tonight um, full may be the operative word awesome experience down there at ground level right near the bullpen and been down there and spoken to a lot of people that have spent the night and they really have enjoyed it just really smelling the liniment and being right in amongst it as that 2-2 count remains with two out. Runner on first. Kittredge. Wow. And that ball is smoked into the bite. Dug out. And potential I decapitation. I actually sat down at ground level before the game tonight. And something I don't always do. But uh, Norwood Oval is a, a beautiful venue. And just sitting down there at ground level is, is a very special experience. Finally gets one in play, and again, Choi, in just very professional manner, got a hard hit ball. Going to take a little deflection out of the dirt in front of him, but he put his body on the line and knocked it down and made an excellent put out. The big G man, very important out for the bite. So nothing changes here. One run lead for the bite as we'll go for a seventh inning stretch, courtesy of the magnificent fielder's choice. We'll have a short break and we'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. Go and refresh. We've got a real ball game on our hands.
So we're back here at Nord Oval going into the bottom of the seventh. The Adelaide Bite leading five runs to four. Leading off for the Adelaide Bite is Nathan Melendres. Lundgren starts it up with a fastball strike. Big impressive unit. Good six, seven, six, eight. He gets Melendres with a two bounce chopper to third base. Where Shepard makes a routine out. Looking at Zach Shepard being such a young player, he's got a lot of baseball in front of him. Uh, I think we can ex expect to see some big things from young Mr. Shepard. Which of course is what national baseball is all about, is giving the young men a chance to uh, show off their wares with the opportunity to bigger and better things. Great to have the ABL back here in Australia and seeing the quality of the game that we're now getting. As Lodge picks one off his toes and gets a base hit to left field. And JD Williams out there who saw it off the bat and gave himself half a chance but that ball was just dipping to the ground and he ended up taking a backhand half volley and what could have potentially gone back to the fence and been some extras but JD he backed got, himself in and uh, he completed uh, what was quite a difficult chance really batting Steph Welsh so second hit tonight for Lodge may have been scored an error the previous one as a, I put it down a single to five, five. it uh, might have been scored TH TH too hot to handle I think it would have been a safe hit. Thank you, Jim. So Steph Welsh with a single to nine, hit by pitch ball and a line drive to right field. Been in good nick tonight. In good nick most nights, but been in very good nick tonight. And the bite, and I'm sure they won't be resting on their laurels, but they really need to be putting the foot down and need a run or two as Lundgren is a very very long set which is another little play by the pitcher so base runners work off timing off the of pitchers and it's very important for pitchers to vary that timing so runners can never get a handle on exactly what speed they're pitching at as Lundgren gets one up and out and Klein tried to claw that one back into the strike zone but ball one and he locates Makes an immediate adjustment. Same cross of the plate, but down six inches. Strike one. Now the terrific aspect of pitching to be able to throw the ball really where you want to throw it. And when you have played the game and pitching was never your forte but you always kidded yourself to think that oh I'd like to have a crack at it and you realise how hard it is so absolutely hats off to pitchers they do a great job they're very very powerful Pe careful. athletes don't, don't praise them up too much here I mean you know we all know what they're like <laughs> We roll along, bottom seven, one out. 
Ben Lodge is a base runner on first base for the bite, and they lead it 5-4 to four in this game. This whole series has been as tight as the Australian budget at the moment, Jim. It's, there's nothing C being given. Certainly has been, and it's been a great tussle. I must say I have really, really appreciated both the away series for Adelaide Bite and this one uh, as to how close it's been and uh, the calibre of play. Lodge takes off and Welsh just rips one around the corner and that ball's gone 450 feet but foul into the nice little condos there so somebody's uh, got a present. Uh, we put one up on the uh, balcony every now and then. I'm sure they'll find one there tomorrow morning. So Lundgren, as Lodge goes again, and Welsh fouls that one off opposite way this time. Absolute scurry for the baseball by kids and adults and anyone who's interested. Pop it in the pocket and take it home, which is another great thing here at Norwood Oval. And kids love it. And a terrific crowd in. Must have a good 1,000 to 1,200 people in. Superb night in Adelaide. And the real baseball lovers have come out to see a great game. Well, I think the temperatures being a little more uh, normal summer <laughs> uh, probably have invited a few people out who may have been out last night instead. But uh, 44 was a bit much to handle here in Adelaide yesterday. And we keep going and Lodge this time and he's gone again. Deep right field, gone. Two run blast by Stephen Welsh. And the Adelaide bite get some prayers answered for him. A little bit of insurance as we hear in the bottom of the seventh dig and Steph who's just a dynamite player just launched into that shot and Drove it over the shark net there at right field. Two run shot. Well, with only one away and G-Man Choi coming to the plate, followed up by Quincy Lattimore, um, the Adelaide Bite fans will be getting a little excited here. Can G-Man start us off again? Knowing the competitive nature of this man, Choi, he'd be really wanting to get amongst this action. He's a class act and his things haven't exactly rolled his way thus far, but and there's a breaking pitch. They've done some good scouting. They've been able to keep him well and truly at bay in this series thus far, but we've got a little way to go just yet. As again, he <laughs> chops one to second base for another infield out. Oh, I think G-Man with his uh, four to three plays is uh, probably getting a little frustrated with that play. <laughs> he struck out, rolled into a double play, four to six to three. Picked a walk. And then another ground ball to second base for a four to three. So two out with Quincy Lattimore. Who had a long bomb and he goes first pitch and Shepard fielding back on the power hitting Lattimore. With had the good arm strength to get it over to Robbins and get rid of Lattimore and get rid of the bite. And complete the seventh dig. We got the Adelaide Bite seven, and the Blue Sox four. Take a short break. We'll see you soon.
So Andrew Kittridge goes back to the mound for the Adelaide Bites. And leading off is a right fielder, Chris Snelling. Outside for ball one. A little bit wider for ball two. So much changes from a one run lead to a three run lead. It alters certainly the manager's thoughts on the Blue Sox with regards to his closes and his uh, rotation of pitches. So that was in a very, very important two run shot by Steph Welsh. It a funny old game this one and uh, your best laid plans can be thrown out and there's a heavy hit ball to second base where Kate Bread fields it, flashes a bit of leather and makes an excellent 4-3 to three play to first out for the bite. So coming to the plate for the Sydney Blue Sox is the designated hitter, Boss Monora. The very chunky Boss Monora prepares to receive a breaking pitch and he takes it for a strike. Been a little bit down, the boss. Came into the series batting 90 cents. Still, he's shown a bit of pop with a long bomb last night. And he's always capable of the same as, again, a good slider inside. Gets him with a one-two count. So the ground just looking in great nick here, I'm sure. With Pete's wonderful camera work. As Mona Roa strikes out. And again drags the bat back to the bench, head down. And the boss needs a good little shoulder rub and a bit of a pick-me-up at the minute. <laughs> it's been one of those nights. <laughs> So two out in the top of the eighth. Zach Shepard strides to the plate for the Blue Sox. And takes a good swing at that and sneaks it to the backstop. Timing right on the money. Just a nicely located fastball in. Just couldn't get his hands where he wanted them. It's Kittredge doing a fine job for the bite. Gets a Sends down a change up for ball one. I think he's enjoying being taken out of the closing role and just that little bit of... Just that little less pressure, I think. Just yeah. less pressure and it looks like he's really loosened his shoulders and he's throwing some excellent pitches and that little slider which was semi waste pitch but just in case he just misses outside so 2-2 two -two count two out bite lead by three there's another breaking pitch that fills the count fills the count Kittridge to Shepard. He pops one up. Shallow centre field. 
Quincy tells everyone to get out of my way. It's all mine. And he takes a catch. That completes the top of the eight. The bite lead by three. We'll see you in a moment. And welcome back here to the bottom of the eighth. The Adelaide Bite with a three run lead. Adam Cam up to the plate. Looking to keep things going here for the Bite as he takes ball one on the outside part. Takes a big hack at that one. Straight through it. Ball scorched out to right field. Just bobbled out there by Chris Snelling. Follows up, keeps it in front of him. Holds Adam Cowan to a single. Wow, the crack of the bat there. He yeah, he really got that one. Absolutely belted that one. Absolutely, yeah, nah. He was due to get a nice base hit for the night and uh, gets his first one, I think. So leads off the Adelaide Bites eighth inning for the base hit and Angus Roger. And as per usual, our great men in Sydney the, from the summer of baseball, our good mate P-Mac, just letting us know that I know he's, we're not counting a win just yet, but he said uh, the bite are 11-1 if leading after seven innings. So got a terrific record in this situation, the bite. And for a, a Blue Sox man, we greatly appreciate that stat, P-Mac. You legend, enjoying a nice glass of red sitting in your lounge room. Pulled out the Bruce McAvaney stat book, or the Flint, the Flintoff, Flintoff and Dunn stat book. Adelaide by it with runners at first and second with none out. Good position here. Seeing if uh, Tony Harris will want to try and consolidate and play a bit of small ball here. Get, move the runners around. As Chris Adamson takes the first pitch for a ball on the outside part of the plate. Doesn't come around to show the bunt. So he'll be looking to drive, get a base hit himself. Takes ball two on the inside. Oof. That ball was humming too. That yeah, was it was humming. And must have missed by one of my nose hairs, I reckon. 
<laughs> I wasn't that far away. <laughs> you left yourself open there, Spurs. 2 0, Chris Adamson. Fast ball for a strike. 2 and 1. Adamson. Chris launches one out the left, out of centre field. Great catch by the centre fielder Denning. Keeps the runners stationary. Hit the ball hard all night tonight. Oh, he'd be so happy with himself. I mean, he's you know going one for four on the night, but a line drive nine, line drive eight, single seven, and only uh, one poor swing of, of a routine four to three but all in all yes you're dead right he has been seeing it early and hitting him right on the nose great thing big lungdren gets a slider in strike one on left hand cake bread who's struck out hit by pitch ball and also rolled over to second base for a four to three That pitch outside for ball one. So one out, bottom of the eighth. Runners on first and second. Number nine hitter, Josh Catebread. Seeing if he can continue this little surge by the bite. Clap banners working in full effect tonight. That's the Adelaide bite. Yes, Fans. I was looking for a bit of high five action from my man next to me here, old Johnny Russell, to get involved, but I got nothing. No. I got nothing from him. As Josh strikes out, puts a bit of a dampener on things. Nate Melendrez comes up, two out, runs at first and second Number for the bite. Like to see Nate settle into a good at bat here. Been a little bit eager at his last few at bats, just going early in the count. As he check swings on a pitch outside and they ask the question. The answer is negative. Great all-round baseball of this kid. Can play outfield, play either pivot roles. He's taking the lead-off role. I'm not saying he's not suited to it. He's doing a great job, but he's a better hitter than that in probably the perfect world. He's a good number three hitter, but as we're working out with this lineup. Doing a really good job for his team, and there's another excellent pitch by Lundgren, but not called. Three balls, no strikes, two out. Just on that point, point Spello, you know, when you put a team together from people all around the world and put a great, great team together, you know, on certain teams, you, you might have four or five number three hitters. Now, you know, Stephen Welsh, obviously our number three hitter, and you look at other kind of guys like Lodgy's the number three hitter at his club and you got a whole bunch of guys, probably got about four or five number three hitters in this club that, that you know, in any other team that they would be. So really difficult for Tony Harris and the, and the coaching staff to, to, to work it out. And it does take a little while to, to get them uh, in their correct positions. And uh, he's doing a great job, great job leading off. See him take a walk there, loads of bases up for Benny Lodge who's had a really good night tonight. A couple of hits. Sack, sack bunt, struck out. Single through third base, excuse me, and a single to left field. 
takes a pitch down low for ball one. The thing we've been admiring about Ben is his willingness to swing the bat. Sometimes you sort of would like to see him not be so impetuous, but at the end of the day, he's a young man who doesn't freeze under any situation. He just keeps on doing what he knows he does best. And he's been having a great breakout year in the ABL. So with loaded deuces, two out, gets a superb breaking pitch from Lundgren, but again, just missing the plate. 2-1 count, two out, bottom eight, bite by three, with loaded bases. Lodge just gets a little inside it's out and fouls that ball over onto Cooper's Hill. Massive scurry from the kids. A few little Asheville burns on the knees. But hey, I got the I got the rulings and that's all that mattered. So Lundgren. Ooh, comes inside and just gets a piece of lodge on the way through. So he on a hit by pitch ball and loaded bases. The leadoff man, Adam Cam, who scorched one to right field, crosses the plate for give the bite a four-run lead. Yeah, good at bat by Ben Lodge for staying involved, drawing that hit by pitch. Lundgren with his heart as he throws, sometimes has a small amount of control problems. That time there just clipping Lodgy on the inside leg. Sees a visit. This is where this game is always intriguing that we're two out and putting Lodge on. The result of that is he brings the very hot three hitter in Steph who's single to nine, hit by pitch ball, line drive nine and a bomb over to nine. So to say the man is seeing him well is a complete understatement. And that's the result. The loaded bases, two out. Bite with an 8-4 lead. Crowd's really getting into it tonight, which is fantastic. He's Lundgren. Big man, just only a fraction wayward. It's a very fine line, throwing balls and strikes. The big fella's just, just struggling at the minute, and his, his weight's not exactly going to the plate at the moment. Just leaving his arm a little bit behind and consequently 2-0 count. Make that a 3-0 count. So as much as he wouldn't want to be throwing the ball down the middle, he also doesn't want to walk a run over either. I think for everyone involved, prefer to see your pitcher Have a crack, then walk one over, and he comes again, and he puts one in the dirt for ball four. So he walks over a run. We see Andrew Sperling break out with some Gangnam style up here in the commentary box. It's outstanding. Seeing 500 kids jump up and down with Gangnam style and Sperlo with his little rendition. 
Oh. Line drive off the glove. Unlucky there for the Adelaide bite. But lucky for Sydney Blues. Socks. As we tap on another couple of runs going into the top of the ninth. Adelaide Blight leading 5-4. to four. We'll take a break, and, bite, a break and come back to you shortly with the last inning. Welcome back here to Norwood Oval, top of the ninth, Adelaide Bight leading 9-4 to four with Adelaide Bight closer Richard Olsen taking the mound against his old team, the Sydney Blue Sox, looking to close out this game without any further damage as he starts off with a strike to Jacob Eunice, who's had a pretty good night with the bat himself. One for three is not a bad night. I'll take 3.33 any day of the week. And the little pocket rocket, Richard Olsen, he's taken over as the closer for the Adelaide bite. It's fair to say that he's probably got a couple of extra mile on the fastball tonight against his old club. Doing and a mighty fine job. Gets rid of Eunice in three pitches. So the bite two outs away. I don't know what, claiming game three. I don't know what Jacob was asking the umpire then, whether or not that was a strike or whether his swing looked good or not. I'm not really sure, but uh, that was strike three and first out for the Adelaide Bite. This man... He's doing such a fantastic job for the Adelaide Bidey. Very unassuming little character. And just steps up on that mound and delivers. It's just wonderful to see. He's really balanced the pen up a little bit. Kittredge is his setup guy. And old Richie's come in and he's doing a superb job for the bite as JD Williams fouls one over the grandstand of the parade. A couple of our, one of our long-term listeners in Rushy, just saying good day and tuning in with us. Nice to hear from you, fella. And our co-commentator and Ben Dixon sitting at home and liking what he's seeing as well as Kate Britt has to go and get that one. And JD Williams, who's a flying machine, Put some real pressure on, but Kate Bread held himself together and made a good out. Yeah, it's a tough play. You know, they work on that in their PFPs with the second baseman and the first baseman converging. 
bit of communication. So it just goes to show a bit of practice makes perfect. Adelaide bite with two out. Five run lead. Looking to close out this game right now. So quite fitting that Zach Penprose is in the box at this moment. He's been a very, very interesting character. Swinging a long bat is Olsen. Gets one over. 1-1 one, one count. Two out. Top nine. Bite by five. He chops one to third base. Welsh goes and gets it. Piffs it over to Choi. And that's a game three victory to the Adelaide Bite. And they take this series lead two to one. Keeps Superb effort, what's he? Absolutely. Keeps this series alive and keeps their finals hopes within reach of winning this series and, and just keeps them going with a bit of momentum. So uh, Adelaide Bite will go into tomorrow afternoon's game full of confidence. The bat's alive. And uh, they'll be hoping that their pitching staff can hold the Sydney Blue Sox to a, uh, to a small score so they can score some more runs and have a third win for the series. Thanks very much for tonight's Bellow. Absolute pleasure, Watsy. Always a pleasure, mate. And to Jim Manning for us coming up and helping us out as well. We've enjoyed ourselves up here. We hope you've enjoyed our telecast. On behalf of Peter Wyatt and myself, we are the 10th inning. We'll say goodbye and we'll see you at 1 o'clock SA time tomorrow. Au revoir.